modes of discovery, particularly Rule 25. Again, our mnemonic is PIDEA and we are done with letter P that is your Rule 27 as well as Rule 28. So next topic should be deposition, letter D. But before we go to letter D, mas magandang i-discuss natin si letter I first because you will be appreciating more deposition and you will understand more deposition if we start our discussion with Rule 25, and that is your interrogatories to parties. 2016, bar exam question number 2, letter A, briefly explain the procedure on interrogatories to parties under Rule 25. So, what is the procedure? Madali lang naman. You just need to file an ex parte motion, and then you have to serve written interrogatories to the adverse party. What is our basis? That is very clear according to Section 1, Rule 25. So again, ha, while you are allowed to serve an ex or to file an ex parte motion, meaning without notice, but take note that the rule requires you to serve upon the adverse party the written interrogatories. So here is a sample of written interrogatories na ipapadala mo sa iyong kalaban. So what can you observe? It is just a set of questions. It is just a set of questions. But let me just remind you that your written interrogatories or your Rule 25 can be availed by any party. Meaning to say, Hindi lamang si plaintiff ang pwedeng mag-avail ng Rule 25, just like an our sample. But also, the defendant can avail of your Rule 25. Meaning to say, pwede rin si defendant mag-file ng written interrogatories kay plaintiff. And what else? If the party served is a juridical personality, meaning to say that juridical personality is either a public or private corporation, or partnership or association, then in that case, sino ang sasagot on behalf of that juridical person? Answer is any officer as long as that officer is competent to testify on behalf of the juridical person. So after the filing of that ex parte motion and service of written interrogatories to the adverse party, what is the next step or what will happen next? The adverse party should file and serve his answer, answer to that written interrogatories, and the period is 15 calendar days from the service of written interrogatories. What is our basis? That is very clear according to Section 2 of Rule 25. Again, ha, take note, the period is 15 calendar days. Before, ang nakasulat lang is 15 days, but under the 2019 rules, yung 2019 amendment, meron nang naka-indicate na calendar day. So, 15 calendar days. So, here is a sample of an answer to interrogatories. Simply lang naman, pag binatuhan ka ng written interrogatories, the requirement is you need to answer them. And according to Section 2 of Rule 25, the answer to the written interrogatories should be in writing and should be signed and sworn to by the person making them. It should be under oath. Kaya itong ating sample dito, take note, oh, meron siyang oath. So to recap the procedure, very simple lang. The first thing that you need to do is to file an ex parte motion, but even if it is an ex parte motion, the rule requires that you need to serve written interrogatories to the adverse party. And again, ang sabi nga natin, your written interrogatories are just set of questions. And then the adverse party is required to file and serve his answer and the period is 15 calendar days from the service of written interrogatories. Question, can the adverse party file a motion for an extension of time to file an answer to written interrogatories. What is the answer? The answer is yes. Meron na agad nag-react. Bakit yes? E di ba? Ang motion for extension of time is a prohibited motion. Answer is 
Yes, that is a prohibited motion. Very clear according to Section 12 of your Rule 15 that your motion for extension of time to file pleadings, affidavits, or any other papers is not allowed. And if you are going to read Section 11 of Rule 11, that motion for extension to file is considered a mere scrap of paper. But you read this last sentence. Ano ang sinasabi dyan sa last sentence? The court, however, may allow any other pleading to be filed after the time fixed by these rules. And if you're going to read Section 2 of Rule 25, malinaw na malinaw na nakasulat dyan that if there is a motion filed and if there is a good cause shown, then the court may extend or shorten the time to file your answer to written interrogatories. Kaya, pwede kang mag-file ng motion to extend the time to file an answer to written interrogatories or you can even file a motion to shorten the time to file an answer to written interrogatories. Kaya, wag malito ha, take note of that. So, you adverse party, before you file and serve your answer, what else can you do? you adverse party can file your objections to interrogatories and if you are going to file your objections you need to do that within 10 calendar days from the service of that ex parte motion what is our basis that is very clear according to section 3 of rule 25 if there are any objections to any interrogatories then you have to present the objections to the court within 10 calendar days from the service thereof with notice as in case of a motion. So take note ha, under Rule 25, dalawang period ang kailangan tandaan. First is 15 calendar days and the 15 calendar days from the service is applicable if you are going to file your answer and the second is 10 calendar days if you are going to file your objections to interrogatories. Question, what could be your ground for your objections? Go to Section 5 of Rule 25 because that could be a ground for your objection. Section 5 reads that interrogatories may relate to any matters that can be inquired into under Section 2 of Rule 23. Ano ba yung Rule 23? That is of course the famous deposition. And Section 2 is about the scope of examination. In Section 2, it reads that the deponent may be examined regarding any matter. The deponent may be examined regarding any matter as long as it is not privileged and it is relevant to the subject of the pending action. So, if the matter or if the questions raised in your interrogatories is a privileged matter, or it is a privileged question, then you can use that as a ground for your objection. If the question is not relevant to the case, then you can also use that as a ground for your objection. Kaya take note ha, not privileged, relevant, very important. Balikan natin itong not privileged. Kasi ang not privileged, Applicable, la, applicable siya hindi lamang sa Rule 25 Interrogatories to Parties but also applicable to Rule 23 and 24. That is your deposition. But also, take note ha, ang not privileged the term, you will see that if you go to your Rule 27. Recall your Rule 27, that is the production or inspection of documents or things Nakasulat dyan that one of the limitations of the production or inspection of document of, or things is that they are not privileged. Kaya, take note of that word, not privileged. Very important yan sa modes of discovery. 
2012 bar exam question number 88 if there is an objection to any interrogatories it can be presented within blank days after service thereof what are the choices letter a 15 letter b 10 letter c 5 letter d 20 so pinag-usapan na natin to ang answer here is letter b 10 Section 3, again, is very clear that if you have any objections to any interrogatories, then you have to present your objections to the court within 10 calendar days. Take note, ha? 10 calendar days. That is the amendment under the, section, under the 2019 rules of court. 10 calendar days. And ano ang mangyayari kung hindi pa nare-resolve ang iyong objections, then you can defer the filing and the service of your answer. Answers shall be deferred until the objections are resolved, which shall be at as early a time as is practicable. If you are not able to read the difference between Rule 25 and Rule 12, wag magpanik. Bakit? Madali lang naman ang kanilang distinction. Recall your Rule 12, that is the Bill of Particulars. When do you file a motion for Bill of Particulars? Answer is, if there is an statement in the pleading that is not averred with sufficient definiteness or particularity, therefore, you can file Rule 12 or your motion for Bill of Particulars. Malabo yung pleading. Ang solution is file Rule 12. So, pag titingnan mo ng maigi, yung Rule 12 is ang inaatake mo is yung pleading. That is directed to a pleading. Rule 12 is directed to a pleading. How about your Rule 25? Based on our discussion, is Rule 25 directed to a pleading? Answer is... No, kasi sa Rule 25 nga, ang ibabato mo lang sa kalaban mo are series of questions and those questions dapat niyang sagutan. Therefore, your Rule 25 is directed to an adverse party. That is very clear according to Section 1. You are just going to elicit material and relevant facts from your adverse party. So, if in your Rule 12, your reason or your purpose for filing a motion for Bill of Particulars is in order for you to prepare to prepare properly your responsive pleading, in Rule 25, your reason or your purpose in filing interrogatories is to elicit material and relevant facts. Bakit? Because, again, you go back to the purpose of the modes of discovery. Balikan natin ang purpose ng modes of discovery. That is meant, your various modes or instruments of discovery are meant to serve as a device. Device to what? To narrow and clarify the basic issues between the parties and also as a device for ascertaining the facts relative to these issues. Bakit? Mas maganda kasi na alam mo na ngayon ang lahat ng facts para pagdating ng trial, you already know the fullest possible knowledge of the issues and facts and that will prevent you party from being in the dark when the trial comes. Said trials and to prevent that said trials are carried on in the dark. So take note of that ha. The purpose of the Rule 25 and the purpose of Rule 12. Next, we'll distinguish interrogatories to parties from written interrogatories in a deposition. Ito, pakinggan nyo talaga to. Kasi kung yung kanina, yung distinguished Rule 25 from Rule 12, that is your Bill of Particulars, for sure, kahit pa paano makakasagot kayo doon kasi more or less, meron naman kayong idea sa Bill of Particulars. But this one, deposition, hindi masyadong inaaral, nakakatamad basahin, so therefore, baka talagang ang sagot mo dito is how siya how siya na masyadong malabo so take note ha take note that if you are going to take a deposition there are two modes of taking it first is 
there is such a thing as deposition upon oral examination and the other one is deposition upon written interrogatories. So, ang dinidistinguish natin dito is yung interrogatories to parties versus deposition upon written interrogatories. The other mode of taking your deposition. What is our basis if we talk about these two modes of deposition taking? You read Section 1, Rule 23, very clear. The testimony of any person may be taken by either deposition upon oral examination or deposition upon written interrogatories. But saan sila nagkakaiba? Kasi parehas naman yan, interrogatories nagkakaiba sila sa person involved. Because if we talk about written interrogatories in a deposition, that person could be any person. Section 1 again, very clear, the testimony of any person, whether that person is a party to the action or not, may be taken. And if you are going to differentiate that from your Rule 25. Ano ang natatandaan nyo palagi sa Rule 25? You are going to serve your interrogatories to the adverse party. To the adverse party, very clear according to Section 1 of Rule 25. Kaya kung sa written interrogatories in a deposition, the person involved is either a party or not, Sa Rule 25, the person involved is always a party to the case. So aside from persons involved, saan pa nagkakaiba ang written interrogatories in a deposition under Rule 23 from your Rule 25? You recall the procedure. What is the procedure again? In your Rule 25, very simple lang. You just need to file, or you can file now, an ex parte motion, but the rule requires you to serve written interrogatories to the adverse party. And then that adverse party will file and serve his answer to the written interrogatories. So that is the procedure. But how about in your Rule 23? What is the procedure? The procedure can be found in Section 25 of Rule 23. And the procedure is similar to that examination of an individual witness. What can you recall in the examination of a witness? Diba? Tatanungin mo, and that is the direct examination. Then the opposite party will conduct the cross-examination, and then there will be redirect and then recross. That is the same also if we talk about written interrogatories. You will just serve first written interrogatories upon the other party, and then the party served will now will now serve his cross interrogatories and then the latter will serve the redirect interrogatories and then the opposing party will serve now his recross interrogatories so that is the procedure so ngayon meron na kayong idea kung ano ang nangyayari sa deposition so when we talk about or when we discuss deposition, more or less madali na ninyong maintindihan. Hindi na kayo aantukin. Let's go back to section 5, the scope of interrogatories. Again ha, ang scope ng interrogatories is the same with the scope of deposition. And ano ang sinasabi ng section 2? You can examine the deponent or the adverse party regarding any matter as long as it is not privileged and it is relevant to the case or to the action. How about the use of interrogatories or the use of deposition? Meaning to say the answer to the written interrogatories or the answer to the deposition. Saan mo naman yan gagamitin? If you're going to read section 4 of rule 23, that is the use of depositions or the use of answers to written interrogatories, the answer there may be used by any party for the purpose of contradicting or impeaching the testimony of the deponent. Likewise, you can 
used also that answer or the deposition if the witness is already dead or he is residing more than 100 kilometers from the place of trial or hearing or he is outside of the Philippines or he is unable to attend or testify because of age, sickness, infirmity, or imprisonment. So take note ha, yung used ng deposition is the same with the used of interrogatories. Let's go now to section 4 of Rule 25, the number of interrogatories. So balikan natin yung ating example, this girl who filed a case against this guy. And let us just say that this girl served written interrogatories to this guy. So, ano ang sinasabi ng Section 4? If you, Miss Bea, is going to avail of Rule 25, then the requirement of the law is you cannot serve more than one set of interrogatories to be answered by Mr. Gerald Anderson. Hindi mo pwedeng tambakan si Mr. Anderson ng written interrogatories. You are only allowed to do it once unless... Kung kailangan mo talagang mag-serve pa ng panibagong written, of, uh, panibagong written interrogatories, you need to file it with leave of court and the court will allow you to file that one. So, yan ang ibig sabihin ng Section 4. Question, can this girl who filed a case against this guy, can she call this guy to the witness stand? Answer is, possible, pwede. Pwede niyang tawagin as the witness. And ang tawag dito sa guy is adverse party witness. In fact, if you're going to read your rules on evidence, you will see that in your Rule 132, Section 10. If the witness is an adverse party, then you are allowed to ask leading and misleading questions. And if you read farther in Section 13 of Rule 132, if your witness is an adverse party, then you can impeach him because the rule is you cannot impeach your own witness. But since the witness here is Mr. Gerald Anderson, who is an adverse party, therefore, Miss Bea Alonso can impeach Mr. Gerald Anderson. Bakit lumayo ang ating discussion? Bakit umabot na tayo sa rules on evidence? Because what is the requirement of the law? If Miss Bea Alonso wants to call this guy as an adverse party witness, ano ang requirement ng batas? Ang requirement ng batas is stated in your Section 6, Rule 25. Miss Bea Alonso should first serve Mr. Anderson written interrogatories. And if Miss Bea Alonso will not serve Mr. Gerald Anderson with written interrogatories. What is the effect? She cannot compel Mr. Anderson to give testimony in open court. Likewise, she cannot compel Mr. Anderson to give a deposition pending appeal. So that is the effect if there is a failure on the part of this girl to serve written interrogatories. But that is only the general rule because unless the court will allow and there is a good cause shown and to prevent a failure of justice, therefore, pwede rin namang tawagin na si Mr. Anderson kahit walang written interrogatories na sinerve muna. So if you will be asked like this in 2016, number 2A, bar question, state the effect of failure to give or to serve written interrogatories, answer is Section 6, Rule 25. So, kung ikaw yung abogado na katanggap ang iyong kliyente ng written interrogatories, dapat more or less mangamba ka na kasi ang ibig sabihin lang nun, yung kalaban mo, meron siyang binabalak na ilagay sa witness stand ang iyong kliyente. So to reiterate, sa civil cases, calling the adverse party to the witness stand is generally not allowed. But if there are written interrogatories first served, then you can call the adverse party to the witness stand at ang tawag sa kanya is adverse party witness. Take note of that. So going back to our example, 
di ba ang sabi natin this girl was the one who filed a case against this guy but balik tarin natin let us just say that this guy availed of rule 25 di ba pwede naman i-avail ang rule 25 by any party it can be availed by the de by the plaintiff or by the defendant so Mr. Gerald Anderson filed a written interrogatories to be answered by Miss Bea but this girl ano ang ginawa niya? Wala siyang pake. Hindi niya inintindi. So, what are the consequences if this girl will not serve his answer? Section 5 of your Rule 29 is very clear that if a party willfully fails to serve answers to interrogatory submitted under Rule 25, what will happen? The court on motion and notice may, number one, strike out all or any part of any pleading of that party. Number two, the court may also dismiss the action or proceeding or any part thereof. So, yung kaso na finile ni Bea laban this girl, uh, laban this guy, pwede pang ma-dismiss. So, hindi lang masasayang ang kanyang filing fees nakakahiya pa dahil na-dismiss ang kaso. Pag-uusapan ng mga madlang people. Number three, the court may also enter a judgment by default against that party. Take note again ha of this judgment by default. Very important. And number four, ito mas lalong nakakahiya. In court's discretion, the court can order Ms. Bea to pay this guy the reasonable expenses incurred by him, including attorney's fees. Biro mo, nag-file ka na ng kaso, tapos na-dismiss pa, ikaw pa ang pagbabayarin, papabayaran pa sa'yo ang lahat ng ginastos nitong lalaking to. So, take note of the effect of the failure of a party to serve answers. We are talking of the failure of the party to serve answers. Next scenario, what will happen if Ms. Bea Alonso refuses to answer a question in that written interrogatories? Kanina sa section 5 of your Rule 29, ang pinag-uusapan natin doon is the failure to serve answers. Here in section 1, ang pinag-uusapan na dito is refusal to answer. If a party or in our example, Ms. Bea Alonso, refuses to answer any question, what will happen? The examination will still be completed on other matters or the examination may be adjourned. Next, the proponent may thereafter apply to the proper court of the place where the examination is being taken for an order to compel an answer. E attorney, section 1 is talking about deposition. Bakit mo yan sinasama sa ating discussion? Because you read the next sentence of Rule 29, Section 1. The same procedure may be availed of when a party or a witness refuses to answer any interrogatory submitted under Rule 23 or under Rule 23. 25. Kaya yung pinag-uusapan natin dito, pwede rin i-apply sa Rule 25. So therefore, if Miss Bea Alonso refuses to answer any question, what will happen? Again, the examination may be completed or the examination may be adjourned. And the proponent can go to the court to ask for an order to compel an answer. So if If Mr. Gerald will go to the court and ask for an order to compel an answer, what will happen? Two things will happen. Number one is, if the court will grant the uh, application, then what will happen? The court will now require Miss uh, Miss Bea Alonso to answer the question or interrogatory, and if Miss Bea Alonso still refuses to answer. And his um, and her refusal rather is without substantial justification. Then Mr. Gerald Anderson can now ask Miss Bea Alonso to pay the amount of the reasonable expenses incurred in obtaining the order 
including the attorney's fees. So that will happen. How about if the application to compel an answer is denied? In that case, what will happen if the application is denied and the court finds that it was filed without justifiable justification, then the court may require the proponent or the counsel advising the filing of the application to pay to the refusing party. So it is now Mr. Gerald who will pay Ms. Bea Alonso the amount of the reasonable expenses incurred in opposing the application, including attorney's fees. So take note ha, itong section 1 of Rule 29, it applies on also, it applies not only to deposition, but also to interrogatories, to parties or your Rule 25. So let's summarize para hindi kayo malito. If there is a failure on your part to serve written interrogatories, what is the effect? The effect can be found in Rule 25, Section 6. Ano itong Section 6 of Rule 25? Ito yung you cannot compel anymore the adverse party to give testimony in open court or you cannot compel the adverse party to give a deposition pending appeal. So, tapos na tayo sa effect ng failure to serve written interrogatories. Ano naman ngayon ang effect if you adverse party are not able to serve or to answer the written interrogatories? The answer can be found in Section 5, Rule 29. Binanggit na natin to. Yung, yung the court may strike out, dismiss the action, enter a judgment or order Ms. Bea Alonso to pay the reasonable expenses. But take note ha, take note. Yung Section 5, Rule 29 pertains to the whole set of interrogatories. Meaning to say, pinadalhan ka ng written interrogatories, wala kang pakialam, hindi mo siya talaga sinagot at all. So, this is the effect and the effect can be found under Section 5 of Rule 29. Ano naman ang effect if there is a refusal on the part of a party to answer a particular question? Diba, you remember your written interrogatories is a set of questions. Sinagutan mo naman party, but the problem is there is a portion there. Like for example, it is a 20 questions, but you refuse to answer number 15 or number 18. So, what is the effect if there is a refusal on your part to answer a particular question? The answer can be found in Section 1 and Section 3 of Rule 29. Na discuss na natin si Section 1. Ito yung sinasabi natin that if a party refuses to answer any question, then Still, the examination may be completed on other matters or it may be adjourned. But the proponent, the proponent can now go to the proper court and ask for an order to compel an answer. And if that application is granted, then the court now can require that refusing party to answer the question or interrogatory. Otherwise, kung hindi siya makakapagbigay ng justifiable or substantial justification, then the court may require him to pay the reasonable expenses incurred including attorney's fees. So, yan ang sinasabi ng Section 1. So, again ha, paulit-ulit, if you fail to answer a particular question, then the effect is found in Rule 29, Section 1, and Section 3. We already discussed Section 1. What is Section 3? Section 3 is about other consequences. So, if a party refuses to obey an order made under Section 1, then uh, under Section 1 requiring him or her to answer designated questions, then the court is allowed to make orders. But I have to call your attention to Section uh, 3C. It, kasi mahaba itong Section 3C, no? Uh, Section 3. So, we'll concentrate on Section 3C. 
Section 3C states that the court is allowed to make an order, striking out pleadings, staying further proceeding, or dismissing the action or rendering a judgment by default. And if you're going to read that one, diba pag kinumpare mo yan sa Section 5 of Rule 21-29, more or less, they are the same. They are the same. So saan sila nagkakaiba? Take note ha that your Section 5 pertains to your failure to answer a whole set of interrogatories. Pinadalhan ka ng written interrogatories, hindi mo pinansin, wala kang pakialam, hindi ka nag-file ng answer at all. Whereas in your Section 3C, pinadalhan ka ng written interrogatories, Sinagutan mo, but there are portions there or there are numbers there that you do not want to answer or you refuses to answer. So if a party refuses to, uh, to answer a particular question, what is the requirement in order for the court to issue this order? Section 1, again, is very clear that you need to go first to the court and ask the court for an order to compel an answer. And if that application is granted and is still itong si party, matigas talaga ang ulo, hindi talaga sumasagot and wala namang substantial justification, then aside from these consequences, yung payment of reasonable expenses, you can avail now of this consequences. Itong is striking. And if you are going to compare that to Section 5, in Section 5, there is no need for you to go to the court and ask first for an order. So, dyan sila nagkakaiba. Last slide, what are the five modes of discovery? And give a brief description. The answer is PIDEA. And for the brief description, for your Rule 27 and for your Rule 28, it requires a motion. But in your Rule 25, you need also to file a motion, but you can file it ex parte. And for your Rule 27 and for your Rule 28, there must be a good cause, good cause shown and you have to notify the other party. How about in your Rule 25? Since it is an ex parte motion, there is no need for you to notify. But what is the requirement of the rule? You have to serve written interrogatories or set of questions to the adverse party. In Rule 27, one of the limitations is or one of the limitations for you to inspect a document or things is it is not privileged. How about in Rule 28? When can you avail Rule 28? If the physical condition or the mental condition of a party is in controversy. How about in Rule 29? At Rule 25, rather, you can ask the party any question as long as that question is not privileged and or as long as the answer to that question, rather, is not privileged and that question is relevant to the case. And that is also true when you talk about the position kasi ang sabi nga natin, the scope and use of Rule 25 is the same with the scope and use of the position. So, you can ask also any question as long as it is not privileged and it is relevant to the case.